Hello and welcome back to a brand new series. Today we're going to take a look at XCOM Chimera Squad. My name is Saiken and I want to invite you uh, to the latest game of the XCOM franchise. I know everyone is uh, excited about that release and so am I. So it's going to be a brand new um, playthrough and I'm going to save a couple of the opinions that I do have about the game for the very end of the playthrough and uh, hopefully uh, can share some tips and tricks with you on the way up, uh, of playing through the game. I took the first couple of days after the actual release to familiarize myself with the game so I would call myself moderately familiar with it now. And today we're going to uh, play a game of Chimera Squad on impossible difficulty and uh, to spice it up we are going to play Iron Man uh, to essentially have a single file um, and no option to reload and to spice it up even further we're going to play hardcore meaning if we fail a single mission the entire run is over uh, we take no healing in between encounters which is pretty much the hardest difficulty that you can uh, play the game on um, it is going to be a brutal challenge but I I'm pretty confident that we can um, handle it so let me invite you to Chimera Squad I'll um, uh, say a couple of uh, things uh, along the way as we go. There are a lot of new mechanics and um, I assume that many of you are already generally familiar with uh, the game, but the newcomers, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the game so far, bear with me. I'll go through um, all of the decision and kind of explain it uh, as we go. Uh, so no worries if you don't know the game yet. I'll just give it um, uh, give it an explanation. So uh, basically the uh, pre-story of the game and I'll skip most of the movie dialogues as uh, I'm sure if you play the game yourself uh, can enjoy. So the pre-story of the game is essentially we're in a sequel, untimed uh, sequel after XCOM 2, after successful liberation. And this time we're going to join City 31, which uh, seems to be a metroplex where apparently aliens and uh, humans are now now coexisting over the course of the city you'll always uh, over the course of the campaign you'll also get a couple of interesting information um, a piece of information about how they coexist uh, and how the aliens have integrated so the lore seems to be uh, a bit of a larger focus um, in in this quote unquote uh, little side uh, side game when we take a look at our job here, we basically are the police force, an independent police force um, or an independent force that's supposed to help um, keeping the city from being unruly. And uh, we do have a pretty wide selection of characters uh, to begin with. I don't want to immediately go through all of uh, the characters because that would take probably a longer time. But basically how I personally would classify these characters is you do have a couple of characters. As I, I would probably take three different like um, roles with uh, with uh, that uh, each of the classes fall into. You do have uh, the characters that are basically breaching uh, and uh, quote unquote tanking or frontlining. These are usually characters uh, that will shake up enemy formations uh, in some shape or form um, and will be very sturdy, quote unquote tanks. Um, there are supportive character classes, a couple of which can heal, a couple of uh, which um, uh, can do other things in order to uh, in order to protect your squad and then uh, there are uh, battlefield control character classes it is very very seldom with the exception of one single character who's a pure dps character everyone else has a has a separate second um, ability and that's how i essentially clustered them in my humble opinion so far I would always advise you to go for a team that is well balanced. It makes the game incredibly, um, uh, incredibly fun and very safe to play through. So the starting team that we're going to select will contain four characters. 
And I'll basically select uh, four characters that I personally feel are very strong in the game. I'll give you a, a short de description. And again, I'm not power ranking the characters, but for this playthrough, I'll uh, give you an explanation why I'm picking them. We're starting with Verge. Verge is basically a sector, um, and Verge has uh, the nice ability to be able to um, uh, crowd control enemies. He has stupor, which is uh, um, a form of stun. Can uh, uh, can um, run between one or two actions. One action means um, the enemy is missing one of the two actions. Two actions essentially means they are losing their entire next turn. Um, he also has uh, the ability uh, to uh, um, uh, panic enemies so that they are uh, essentially hitting their own teammates. In order to balance these incredibly strong um, uh, traits, he'll uh, have a so-called neural network, which essentially means uh, that characters that you have uh, um, that you have mentally influenced recently cannot be influenced again. So you can't chain CC the same character, but you can change CC other um, characters and uh, the agent gets a plus 10 aim bonus for everyone in his neural network meaning he's going to be incredibly good at hitting things and um, in the later game he'll be an absolute monster because he can drain life from everyone in his neural network and become really really powerful definitely one of the character classes that i enjoyed uh, playing through um, he certainly is a great battlefield controller second character class that i'm going to or second uh, agent that i'm going to pick is terminal terminal is the classical specialist who um, has uh, spec into healing and i know what you're going to think you know what i can i don't know about healing rest assured and you will see that on our playthroughs if you want to make sure that you are winning uh, the missions consider uh, taking uh, terminal I uh, would say that without, again, going into a power ranking, but she would uh, definitely rank very, very high on a power ranking. She can heal every single round, which is yet another incredibly strong ability. She has um, uh, the ability to um, to open secret passages or open unclosed uh, passages that you would elsewise not get. On top of that, she can essentially shift her actions over to others uh, and action point any form form of uh, action economy manipulation is ungodly in this game. It is very, very powerful and thus I would definitely uh, pick her in my team. Um, thirdly, I am going to pick Chiro, uh, who is our frontliner. Um, you might be surprised about that, uh, and I could imagine if you haven't played the game, uh, he's probably not one of the characters that immediately kind of springs uh, uh, in, into your into your uh, vision. Uh, so Chiro is uh, one of uh, one of uh, the Advent soldiers who had uh, retired, and uh, he's he's now working for this organization. Uh, the ability as uh, abilities as a character is. I would um, probably classify him as a frontline character, but uh, on, um, on top of that, he's a supportive character. So he has the ability of kinetic, uh, kinetic shield, kinetic shield making someone invulnerable against the next uh, physical attack. Uh, which, yet again, is uh, such a strong ability. Uh, whenever the target that he made and vulnerable uh, with it uh, um, uh, gets hit and the kinetic shield is broken, he gets uh, stronger and stronger. He's having like a massive shield um, that um, loads, uh, that charges up and can uh, then unload uh, this uh, stored energy onto an enemy. So he's going to be our third pick as the frontliner and our fourth pick uh, is going to be the only pure DPS uh, character. I personally enjoyed uh, playing a lot with him, Bluebird. Instead of a, a sniper, he's, uh, uh, he's wielding dual pistols and I uh, can say very good things about uh, uh, Blue Blood. Uh, his damage output reaches levels where uh, if you play him right uh, later in the game, you can essentially win entire encounters by just using him. He can very much carry uh, the game uh, later down uh, the road. And if he's being set up, uh, which the other characters to a degree uh, will do, he is going to unleash 
ungodly damage on the enemy. Uh, he has the ability to shoot twice, uh, so if you put him into a good position, he can basically just continue to shoot and shoot and shoot. Um, and uh, he has a specific ability, which is pretty much uh, very similar to the Null Lens in XCOM. Um, ignores any cover, just goes straight through multiple enemies and um, uh, later in the game, even escalates, so deals uh, 4 damage to the first enemy, then 6, then 8, then 10, then 12. So if you find a good um, a good null lens, boy oh boy, the mission is over for uh, for the enemy. So these are uh, this is the selection of the 4 agents that we're going to start with. Uh, basically, it's a very well-rounded team. We do have a frontliner, we do have a support character, we uh, very much do have a, um, a crowd control character and we do have DPS. So that's why I select that team. Um, if you do your playthrough, um, I'm more than interested to hear what your f uh, first characters have been. If you haven't done it, I invite you to choose the four characters and give it a try. Uh, you will hopefully not be disappointed. So we're uh, now moving into the actual game. The game is now uh, introducing us to our enemies, and there are definitely three diff very different uh, fact factions. Uh, we do have uh, the Progeny, which is a Psy-oriented faction uh, that is uh, trying to manipulate uh, the, uh, the city. Basically, the storyline is the mayor got killed, and we now need to find uh, out who is behind uh, that. Uh, the Progeny is one of uh, those three factions. Um, the second one are the Grey uh, Phoenix. So pretty uh, much a brutish physical uh, mm, uh, order. And we got an order of hybrids uh, called the Sacred Coil. Uh, we are going to start our um, run with the Progeny, mostly because I found them to be quite difficult um, and I want to show you uh, how to how to deal with f uh, psionic characters right away. Director, these are local criminals. Isn't that 31 PD's jurisdiction? True. The Reclamation Agency supports local police, but we're also required to recover dangerous material. From those who would do the world harm, and each of those groups is neck deep in the stuff. So what next? Focus on a single group. Investigate, dismantle their operations, and take them down. Meanwhile, we look for any links to the mayor's death. Either way, the dangerous organization is off the streets. Exactly. The city wants justice for Mayor Nightingale. This is how we help them achieve it. Great. I figured, by the way, that the uh, that the dialogue scenes might be helpful just to uh, get into it. So we just opened the file for the progeny, and we're now on the case, guys. We are on the case. So uh, let's take a look at... Yeah, we're going to do that in a second. Uh, we don't want to uh, discuss uh, that yet. Director Kelly is a bit too fast for my liking. Um, so first off, uh, we have arrived at kind of uh, the HQ. And before we're now diving into it, I uh, wanted to uh, give you some uh, perspective of what we can do. We do have three different resources. Ilarium is a resource uh, for research. Intel is a resource for base management and uh, for buying um, items from the black market. And credit is basically a resource uh, for fitting out your soldiers. Let's start with the very first one, with Alerion. There is the option um, to research, and you're basically doing that by um, by beginning different research pr uh, programs. The game is relatively straightforward with its research tree. Can he stop uh, talking for a second? Thank you. Uh, so the game is relatively straightforward with its research tree. There is really not so uh, so much uh, depth to it uh, like in a normal XCOM game. It's relatively straightforward. So you upgrade your weapons, you upgrade your armor, but it is still a lot of fun. Believe me, research is going to be important over time. Uh, next up, we do have the spec op uh, missions. Next. 
Keep an eye out for these opportunities. I thought I disabled uh, the tutorial. Anyways, um, so the uh, Spec Ops are the closest to undercover missions or covert ops missions in uh, XCOM 2, uh, War of the Chosen. So you essentially can get additional resources. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with Intel. The reason why we're going to start with Intel is uh, we're... I just realized we need an extra unit for that. Um, so we would need to select either of our units, which we can't do yet. I need all four of them on the mission. As soon as we get additional cops, we will um, start uh, the spec ops and we're going to go for Intel. And I'll show you in a, a minute or two why that is the case. Um, in training, well, that is an interesting concept. So training serves two purposes. Number one, um, we can improve uh, the uh, abilities of, of our soldiers. You will see over time they can train special abilities such as gaining more hit points, gaining more to hit chance, gaining more crit chance. Um, but uh, when they are injured uh, during the battle, they also get battle scars, which is very similar to the uh, negative traits in XCOM 2. And you can use uh, this facility here to get rid of it. So a lot of it will be troop management. We go to our locker room. Uh, where we're going to see our uh, comrades for the first uh, time. The only real uh, customization that you can do is selecting a tint for the armor. Um, I pretty uh, simply uh, went uh, with uh, blue for any form of DPS, uh, any crowd, uh, crowd control uh, was my psionic color and the preferred one there is uh, purple. The frontline uh, fighters uh, got red and the supporters got green. Uh, you don't need to do that, but for me it was uh, simply easier to also assess uh, the, uh, the team that way. Now let's take a look at the loadout. Everyone only has a weapon slot. An, a body armor slot where you can essentially put uh, later armor modifications in there, a breach item, which we're going to talk about the breach mechanic once it occurs, and a an utility item. As you upgrade armor, you get more utility items. Now, we do have 120 um, credits, so let's take a look at uh, the options that we can buy, and I'll shortly talk through that. So we can purchase an auto credit card. An auto credit card allows you to basically take hidden waste, but since we uh, saw um, ways that are uh, sealed off passages, uh, which you elsewise couldn't access. Um, but since we do have a hacker, that is not needed. Breaching charge is a great item to open certain passages um, and walls that are otherwise uh, not um, uh, able to be open. Uh, the ceasefire grenade, uh, grenade essentially is, an, uh, is a grenade like the Psy bomb from the Codices. Uh, it will um, empty the weapon of everyone being hit. The flashbang grenade does exactly that. Uh, uh, gets rid of uh, Psy abilities as well as uh, disorientation for all enemies. We do have med kits uh, which are um, uh, once permission usable items uh, that restore health. We got smoke grenades, um, which are the literal smoke grenades that you are also um, aware of. Tracer rounds, which uh, give plus five to aim. And uh, trank rounds, which is a new item, uh, which will, instead of kill enemies, make them unconscious. And here's a uh, cool uh, tip uh, right off the bat. Um, if you start the game, trank rounds are pretty damn good because um, per uh, enemy that you incapacitate instead of kill, you have a 20% tw um, chance to collect 20 intel. So in other words, if you incapacitate five enemies during a mission, you will get 20 intel for free. And that is on every single mission, which is why we are going to buy two trank, uh, trank rounds and one med pack. And that will be our starter uh, for uh, this mission. We are uh, going to take, a, uh, take them into the loadouts. So you can see our DPS um, gets the trank, uh, trank rounds. Um, our second quote unquote DPS, um, once he, um, he has crowd controlled everyone, will also get trank rounds. Uh, we are 
going to put the medkit on our front uh, line character and that is it this is all we can do uh, from the get-go we will get a lot of additional credits so don't sweat it uh, too much uh, this is the actual city, and this is also where the magic happens. Uh, the game is lost if the uh, city Arnaki level uh, reaches uh, 13 um, uh, blips, and currently all of the sectors of the city are completely quiet, so we're starting the investigation of the Prodigy. And that will be our first mission for 35 credits. So... We do have another advantage, by the way, why, the, why I picked the team that I picked. Um, once we upgrade weapons, it will be important that we do have similar weapons. And both Chirop and Blue Blood both ha uh, have a pistol, which makes it uh, very easy to upgrade it uh, so that you can uh, enjoy the benefit for both of them. Unfortunately, submachine guns and assault rifles are not the same. So these are two different, um, uh, two different weapons, but still, Terminal and Verge are such good characters that they easily make up for it. Uh, we have outfitted everyone and it's ready um, uh, it's ready and go time, 20 minutes after introducing the game, we are off for a head start. So let's jump into uh, the game. We're going to take a look at a couple new mechanics now that uh, we're on our first mission. The actual missions play very different to the missions that you have seen in XCOM, mainly because they are not really open world missions. Instead, they are uh, very much a set of uh, predetermined encounters, but we will talk about that in a second. 3-1 PD asked to speak with this company's owner about his connections to the progeny. That's when his staff pulled weapons, and the police barely made it out. That's bad. Are the police all right? Well, they took no casualties. Try to do the same in there. Perfect. We are starting in breach mode, one of the new um, active uh, concepts that they have introduced. And it's probably one that is going to change the game uh, the most. Essentially, you can, um, they have turned the original quote unquote Overwatch um, uh, abilities uh, that uh, that you had, uh, which never really worked in XCOM 2 because Overwatch uh, as a concept unfortunately had its flaws, into a new concept which is called Breach. Now you can decide how you essentially want to enter a scene and you do have different uh, options. This time we do have two side windows, left and right, as well as a main door. Uh, each of them have a couple of slots which are indicated up here. And you can see the number of enemies that you will see uh, by going through uh, that side. And you will also see whether or not they are hostile or not. In this case, everything is green, so it's the easiest possible breach. Depending on where you go, you will get a certain amount of bonuses. In this case, units that go through the left side uh, gain three mobility for one round um, or uh, 25 defense for one round or successful shots will stun the enemy, which of course is something that is uh, very much uh, very much desirable. We are going to take Verge in, uh, in order to uh, stun um, enemies. Uh, we're going to take uh, Chirop uh, to have the highest mobility and we're simply entering with uh, Terminal and Blue Blood here for the uh, defense bonus. You can also say who's going to enter first. Uh, we want Chirop first, uh, then we want uh, our crowd control second and then essentially uh, the rest uh, in, in through the middle. Alright, it's go time guys. One of my favorite parts about the game is this uh, Max Payne slowdown. So let's talk a bit about what we're seeing here. Not only do you see that the time really slows down and gives this cool effect, you also can see the two hit chance and there are three different colors that you will see over time. Yellow means we have surprised the enemy, they can't do anything, they'll essentially be just standing there Orange would mean that they are alerted. Alerted enemies will run for cover, hunker down, or do whatever other defensive action they can take. And red means they are aggressive, which 
would mean that they are probably going to take shots at you. In this case, like I said, we had the easiest potential breach. So instead of rushing for cover, we're breach firing and starting to um, hopefully kill this guy. So that's one shot. We can see similarly here quite a few enemies um, whom we could hit. Only a 66% chance to hit him. Instead, let's take the Archelite up uh, here. Good, and uh, we know that the Archelite over here is stunned, so we're not going to uh, deal with him. We're instead going to deal with a Thrall, and I'll explain in a second why. So we can deal four points of damage uh, to essentially kill him, yep, which we did. And our last uh, operative will uh, deal with the Archelite here. Um, he's the one, um, Blue Blood is the one who had the Trank Rounds, and I wanted this Archelite to be um, incapacitated. There you go, he's unconscious, so one out of five, done. We got a stunt, two killed, um, oh, one killed and one unconscious right off the bat. Now, the next thing that is different, which you will uh, notice is the timeline at the side. Uh, we have now mixed timelines. So everyone's acting on a uh, single timeline. And you can see next to their pictures, uh, the, um, uh, the position that they are in the timeline. You can also click on them and uh, then the camera zooms up onto the target, which is great in my opinion. It'll very much encourage a lot of interesting game uh, gameplay. So we do have one special ability, which is called Team Up, um, which would basically allow a single character to move up immediately uh, next into the timeline. But we do have three encounters in the entire mission, so we're probably not going to do that uh, right away. Um, we know after we are going, uh, this thug here is going to go. So what we're going to do is, instead of immediately shooting, we are going to kinetic shield ourselves. Meaning we are uh, protected against a single shot. And then we're going to move in. There you go. He's most likely going to shoot us. And we will be immune to his shot. There you go. He did exactly what uh, what he was supposed to. Uh, so Chirop uh, pulled the fire and we are ready to go. Next up, uh, we're going to mind control this guy here. 70% chance is, uh, is not the best, but it's still very decent. Got him stunned for two rounds, so he's going to lose his action. And we're going to incapacitate him. Thanks to our Trank Rounds, we have now two incapacitated. Easy peasy. Uh, this, uh, this fight is already won. I, I can see that. So we only have two enemies. This guy here is stunned, so nothing is going to happen. We're moving up just a tiny bit. There we go. And now... We're taking shots and the first encounter is done very well we stormed the bank and it's time for our next their movements were synchronized but we've seen the last of advent all right breach mode so again Entering through this door marks your units until the end of the encounter, which means we would be very easy to hit. However, there is a security door, and thanks to Terminal being available, she can essentially hack that uh, door, uh, meaning we can enter through it. After uh, she goes in, we're taking our crowd, control, uh, uh, crowd controller next. Shirup is uh, being the third, and Blue Blood is being the fourth. So let's continue our breach. There we go. Moving in. We got no one who could react to us, uh, but we got a couple of really surprise targets, which is wonderful. So 
Let's see what we're going to do. I would say we're going in guns blazing. Looks like this guy here is a perfect first target. That's the third unconscious um, enemy, fourth unconscious enemy. So we're almost uh, having our bonus secured. You know what? Let's go for the Arcolite. There we go. Unconscious. Now we have a, a few enemies on high ground up there. That's reassuring. And we are. We are. In encounter number two of three, probably going to take some damage because we're being flanked uh, um, from here. I do not yet want to team up. Although, if Verge would be the uh, the first to act, we could probably just crowd control him. Um, we got a throat over here to take care of. And we got another throat over there. Okay, fair enough. Let's move into cover. It's a lot of 50-50 shots, definitely not the best uh, possibility. But we're, we're eventually going to be okay. So since everyone was on Overwatch, um, I, I should talk about Overwatch for a second. So Overwatch is a, uh, acts a little bit different in this game. They actually have changed the Overwatch rules. So if we're, you're now going onto Overwatch, uh, you have to specify a corridor. Um, but the Overwatch shot, at least to, uh, to my knowledge, always hits afterwards. So there's no more missed Overwatch. There's one exception, though. If you breach and get Overwatch. It's a 360 degrees Overwatch and um, it could be described in XCOM terms um, as, um, as a, what's it called? Not ready for anything. Uh, basically the ability covering fire, the ability to react on everything and every action, not just movement. So that's why we could essentially just kill him. We are going to use super. Uh, to take this guy out. Easy picking. He's not even a real threat. And we got a two-thirds uh, chance to kill him. Um, that's the sixth enemy uh, who's unconscious, so we're absolutely murdering it. Heading over Kinetic Shield. We know that this guy next turn is not able to do anything. Might as well start shooting him. And you know, since we're almost done, might as well take two shots. Yet another unconscious um, enemy and we're definitely off uh, for a guns blazing first mission. Now, things are a little bit different when enemies start shooting back and I think that was the first mission where they started to shoot back. Yeah, you can see it's no longer easy. Um, uh, they will now start to uh, shoot back, so agent uh, damage is likely. Um, we could enter through a wall if we had uh, purchased uh, the breaching equipment. And I was thinking about that the last time that I played, I used the breaching equipment, but I wanted to use the Trank rounds really, really bad because they pay high dividends over the course of the game. And I'm a big fan of them. Uh, instead, we're going through uh, the uh, main area, tank first, we're going with Verge a second, you know what? No. We're going with uh, Terminal 2nd, Blue Blood 3rd and Verge 4th. We're going to use our ability to immediately put Verge at the, to the beginning uh, or to position number 2. So let's move in. In later missions, one of the reasons why I am um, uh, going to go in with the shield is there are certain talents which are so-called breach talents that you can only use once you are breaching. The breach talent uh, of our shielded friend uh, is essentially to block any form of fire that's coming um, to, uh, towards your squad. So you can 
uh, very often simply use the main entrance, the main door, and uh, you won't receive any uh, any fire back, which is absolutely fantastic. So. We have one red um, enemy over here, one aggressive enemy. That's the guy who's ta gonna take shots at us. We're going to have one enemy over here who's going to hunker down. And we got a couple of um, uh, enemies over here. We're not doing anything. We're definitely going to start with the aggressive one. Mainly because I want to minimize the damage that we're taking. Good, and now that he's out of the way, might as well go for the Archolite, being the next, uh, the next uh, most dangerous target. And how about we're taking the Thrall? All right, not the perfect first round. We got a couple of uh, them just wounded instead of killed, but it's fine. We're going to be fine overall. Good. Clear the executive offices, capture or kill the subject. Not a problem. We just uh, we just got Overwatch on everyone other than uh, Shirab. Shirab himself is going to kinetic shield him. Kinetic shield himself. Then we're going to team up, and like I mentioned, we're going to use Verge as our second soldier. And in order to deal with what we're seeing, I would like to take out the entire left flank over here. Problem is we do have a civilian and I actually don't want the civilian to be hurt. That is one play that we could take. This one here, hitting two for the price of one. This here would hit the civilian. Uh, this is a bit too exposed. I think we're going with that play. Cover in this game, and I don't want to speak out of uh, uh, out of terms, but cover in this game is not as crucial as it had been in normal XCOM. Um, yeah, screw it. We're even if the civilian is unhappy, he's not going to die. Cover is not as crucial, is what I wanted to say. You're oftentimes going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to be okay, even without cover. Um, and the reason for that is special abilities, just like being able to ignore damage. We're taking one important enemy off the field and essentially uh, kill another one, which is great. Meaning, so far, none of the enemies could act. We got a Thrall over here, who will be able to act. And all we need to do is find proper uh, cover. I like uh, this here, because it's not going to expose us. We don't need to heal anyone, so we're actually fine. Let's see if we can hit the uh, Thrall. Wow. We're on a run here. This might be an ace. So this one is stunned. Don't need to do anything. Which means we only have one thrall, but he's in full cover. And we're looking at, what, two, four, six hit points. I was tempted to uh, essentially go in and just kill him right away. Problem is, it's uh, most likely not going to work. We're instead taking full cover. Full cover uh, is great because full cover now not only provides you 40% uh, of cover bonus, um, it also provides you one armor, which is really a nice uh, idea that they had. So you can see uh, we dealt maximum damage, six, but unfortunately he had one armor, so the Arcolite barely survived. Soulfire is one of uh, their abilities that is unblockable. Um, unfortunately, yeah, you it's, so it's it's basically a mental strike. Just the reason why we're focusing the Archolites relatively early. Okay, we still got the VIP here and need to deal with him. We're going to give a kinetic shield to Terminal, and then Shirup is going to go in.
There we go, yet another unconscious target. Time to mind control and stop uh, the target. And let's continue with taking out the Archolites. Fortunately, it didn't work. By the way, uh, now you can see how great healing is. Over the course of uh, these battles, you will see we're going to take quite a bit of damage. Um, and healing every single round is just going to be so, so valuable. Good. Hitting him unconscious. And hitting the the potential subject unconscious means we have almost flawlessly executed 13 enemies um, and ensured us that we definitely get the 20% extra the, the 20 extra intel. We only would have needed five, but um, it's with uh, two sets of trank rounds you can make sure that you're always getting those sweet, sweet additional info points. And you will see it's all about intel and um, supplies at the very beginning. Supplies just to get a jump start with your equipment and intel uh, in order to do the city management. Uh, that's really uh, what I have found uh, out for myself. So we got 35 credits, 20 intel, exactly what we needed. a motive to kill the mayor. As for means, psionics could give them the ultimate insider, a member of Mayor Nightingale's protective detail. Okay, perfect. We are one step closer uh, to the mayor and we can select a new recruit. How great is that? So we got three options. Sephir here is basically a Templar uh, from XCOM 2. He does exactly that, which is going in, um, slapping the enemy with his fist, uh, having mobility and having the option to also stun the enemy. Sefer, it's basically a her, it's not a him. Uh, she's very uh, powerful in melee. Uh, Axiom uh, is a mutant, super uh, fun character, um, who serves the same purpose. It's also a frontliner. He has a uh, few of the abilities from the Berserkers, specifically Smash, which is a great ability uh, to uh, to deal um, uh, frontline damage. He's using shotguns and he's pretty much in your face. He has a rage mechanic that allows him to uh, take a couple of more shots and at some point he's just going to lose it and when his rage unleashes he gets a bonus action and will just attack anyone but um, not your not not a friendly um, target any enemy target but it could leave him exposed and we got claymore who is uh, really a breaching expert uh, including an explosive expert so he's all about uh, uh, all about uh, cover removal, AOE damage, um, and so on and so forth. We already have all of uh, them. I like, by the way, how they um, kind of cl uh, classify or categorize uh, their roles. I wouldn't necessarily say that Axiom is a great cover destroyer or destructor. Um, Claymore does that uh, much better. But um, for what we're trying to do now, I would like to go with Axiom uh, next. Um, he is kind of a bread and butter frontliner and you can't really go wrong with him. Uh, so having him on board. Welcome. What's wrong? I uh, noticed someone took the biggest locker. Yep, that was me. I knew you'd get here eventually and grabbed it so no one else would. Hmm. Don't worry, I'll move my stuff. Yeah, that's the problem. I already did. Violently. You... didn't you see the note? Yeah, afterward. I'll replace what I can. <laughs> All right. Good. With Axiom on board, it's time to supply um, Spec Ops missions. So he's going to do the legwork in the truest uh, sense of the meme uh, meaning. 
So he's going to start uh, getting us some intel every three days. He's essentially starting to get intel. We still research uh, the very first uh, research mission and no one needs training. So that's a perfect uh, moment before going uh, back to the city map uh, into the second mission to call it quits for our first episode. Uh, thank you for uh, watching and tuning in for Chimera Squad. We're going to have a lot of fun with this game, I suppose. Please leave a comment uh, down below for potential questions that you have as uh, well as uh, um, what are the um, uh, teams that you are running. What's your impression? I love to hear your opinion. I reserve most of my judgment for the end of uh, the game so I can give you a comprehensive um, a rundown of what worked well. And... Um, if everything works out well, I might even put some guides out there for each of the characters. Alright guys, have a great one and see you in the next mission. Bye bye!